Welcome to the Behind the Board on Mixing Drums, where we're going to focus on EQ and panning. Uh, we've been very specific with our EQing up to now, and now we're going to actually bring it all together and let these EQs work together to make single sounds out of many sounds and, and so on. Uh, so we'll get started EQing these drums. This is just our first level of EQ, and this is what we've been going over. Our first level of EQ is just subtractive EQ, and it's going to be all about doing sweeps and subtracting. Uh, so let's, let's make this a little bit bigger. For one, hit your Alt Option key, grab the bottom, the last track, and we'll just make these a little bigger so we have more to work with. Okay. And let's start off, I'd like to start off with the kicks. I'm going to rearrange this, put the kicks up top, and it's really simple. I click the first one, I press shift, I click the last one, and now I'm just going to drag them up to the top. So we could start off with the kicks instead of the snare here. Uh, first is our original kick. This is the kick that was mic'd up uh, in the drum room. We had a nice uh, D112 in there, micing this bass drum up here. It's, it's pretty good mic. You can get it on eBay for probably around 100, 120 bucks. Uh, but take a listen to that and we'll start EQing it. And we got a lot of punch out of this guy. We probably want to round that out a little bit. But let's take out all the bad sounds. On the kick drum, I'm not going to do any high pass filter or anything like that because I want the bass drum actually to fill up that space even though we can't really hear it. We should be able to feel it, especially on really good sound systems. That bottom should still kind of hit us in the chest and make us feel something. So I want to leave that in there uh, and other stuff will probably be taking it out. But Let's start working with our low middle frequency. We've done a lot of this, so we're going Q up to 10 dragging this up to 18 and we're going to start sweeping. I'm going to sweep through a bunch, find bad sounds and pull them out. Uh, that's all we'll be doing at this point, so just take a listen. Right there, it's sticking out at me a little bit. It's a very sharp sound. It's right around 95 hertz. That is down real low, but let's take it out a little. I'm taking out 5 dBs of that one, moving on to my middle frequency band. Another real sharp one I'm going to take out a little bit of. Our high middle frequency, our green one comes in next. And if you're having any trouble following along here, please go back to those plug-in videos because we learned a lot about EQs in those. We went over a lot, so I'm not going to be explaining every single step that we make here. I assume that you know a lot of it. Great, so we got our first one done there. Uh, next, we'll want to move on to our kick fat. So if you uh, took a look at maybe our Drumagog video, you'd understand what's going on here is we have our original kick that we captured, and now we'll have two other kicks. I like to have one thicker and one punchier. So we have our kick fat, that'll be a thick one, and our kick punch, which is obviously our punchier one. So we'll start off with our thick one here. Uh, see if there's anything wrong with it. And these sounds, uh, we made these sounds, um, they're pre-EQ'd. There should not be a lot wrong with it, but we might found, uh, find a spot or two. There are times where I find a spot or two right around this range in the 200 area. So I'm going to try to find that spot and pull it out for now. Uh, 
looks like it's around that area. I'm leaving a lot of that low stuff in there. I know you're hearing that and saying, hey, that's popping out, but it's kind of the point of my, my fat kick. I want that low stuff in there and I'll mix it in along with my other kick to make it sound nice. I'll do one high sweep just to make sure, but I don't think there's anything messy on the high end. And the beauty with these kicks is there's also no bleed. You don't hear any snare drum, nothing like that with these sampled drum sounds. Let's move over to the kick punch and do the same thing. Plug in EQ, EQ 3-7 band. Sweep that guy in the low end first. Wow, that's a big one. Let's move around on that, see if there's any more. Great. And like I mentioned, we're only doing subtractive stuff now. We're not adding in, we're not making the sound any better or uh, higher or anything like that. We're not adding anything, just a subtractive stuff. So let's form a kick drum sound with these three bass drums. Bring your kick fat volume all the way down to negative infinity and your kick punch volume all the way down to negative infinity. We could start with this, this kick drum at zero for now. Uh, we'll probably want to do it lower, but we'll we'll come back to this at the end when we get our levels and do and get some nice levels. I just want to see that there's no phasing going on. We have no issues like that. In order to check for phasing, it's pretty simple. Here's your phase button. And you'll hear a little bit of a difference as you push that in and out. If you push this in, and it's highlighted as blue, your phase button is on, which means it's trying to reverse the polarity of your phase 180 degrees. It reverses the phase, gets rid of the phase for you. Uh, but what will happen is while you're listening, you'll hear uh, kind of the bottom drop out, either when that button is in or that button is out. Uh, it will be more in phase when the bottom is bigger, when you have more low end. When you have less low end, that's when you're really out of phase. Um, <clears throat> so that's something you should really focus on too, uh, identifying phase issues. I, I find that to be the simplest way. Um, there's other ways of doing it, uh, but let's see if we come across something that's phasing heavily, I'll actually show to you the other issues with it. Uh, let's move on to our kick punch and mix that in as well. I'm going to see that these two aren't phasing out each other, so I just soloed uh, the fat and the punch and left the kick out of there for right now. We have no phase issues here. We're looking real good. And then I'm going to check these two guys to phase each other as well. No issues. That's great. That's what we want. That's what we'd expect with sample sounds uh, mixed in with your real sounds. We'd expect them not to phase each other out. Uh, let's move on now to our snare drum. Solo that guy out. And we'll start our EQ sweeps on him. Plug in EQ, EQ 3, 7 band. And we'll start by putting our high pass filter on. Snare drum isn't going to fill up that low area. I wouldn't want it to. So I put my high pass filter. I click the in button. I change the Q to 12. And 
I'm going all the way up to about 190 hertz here. Anything under there, I'm not too worried about on the snare drum track itself. So let's start doing our sweeps. Great. Not much to do with that one. It's sounding really good. Now we're going to do a very similar thing on the rest of these snares. We want to take out that low end. So put our EQ on the snare punch track. Let's get rid of that low end right to about the same level, 12 dB, and right around 190, 180, 190. You'll be safe right around there. And remember, this is our kick, our snare punch here, so we want a lot of impact on this one. Uh, so taking out some of the low is okay with this one. On the fat one, we might want to leave a little more low in there because we want it to handle the bottom end a little more. Uh, and these are sounds that have been pre-EQ'd. These are the ones we've been adding in uh, with uh, programs like Drumagog or Sound Replacer and so on. Let's move on to our snare fat. One more sweep, and we have our kicks and snares done with our first EQs. Take out that bottom, high pass the filter. There we go. And start sweeping. This is a loud one. Let me turn it down a little bit. I'm not having too much issue, too many issues with this one either. Again, this is one of our sampled sounds, so we shouldn't have too many issues with it. Let's put them all together. They should not be phasing each other out, but we'll check to make sure. So I'll take the kick punch all the way down, kick fat, all, well, snare punch, snare fat all the way down. And you can see we just added in some more of that snarey type of sound, that almost like bottom snare with that snare punch gives it a little bit more impact and the snare fat should add in the actual bottom. All right, I can say that we have no issues with phasing, but if you'd like to, we know how to do that now. We just click our phase button next to the input and you can check back and forth and make sure that uh, where it is uh, is where you want it to be. So if you have it clicked in and you're losing the bottom, you want to have it clicked out. 
um, and so on. But it, we don't really have any issues here. We'll definitely hear it at some point. Maybe not on this because we did mic everything correctly, like we showed you in the miking video. So shouldn't have too many issues. Now we're going to move on to the floor tom. We're going to do the floor tom first, just because it comes up first right here. Um, and you know what? Let's do the rack tom first. Keep it going in order. So we'll go over to right around two minutes or so. Zoom in over there. And we'll do the rack tom first. Plug in EQ, EQ37 band. And this is uh, when we want to take out a lot of the mid-range. Uh, a lot of that mid-range is nasty for us. So we're going to start with the middle frequency, find the middle of that nasty mid-range, and then start moving that. And then we'll do some sweeps. Sounds pretty good, but we definitely want to get rid of some of this. feeling a little better for me. Solo that is a little better way to do it. And now that's solo, try one more time just to make sure I got the right spot. Yeah, that's nasty right there. And that's even worse actually. So let's go right in between the two of them and remove that. Maybe even widen it up a little bit. That's starting to sound good. Get a lot less just ambient noise coming out of there. All the noise that we want to come is coming now. So let's get below it. We're going to find a place to kind of tweak up. We want to find a place that has a little bit of that boom in there. Maybe too high. Yeah, we got a little boom down here. That's a little too much. So I'm going to come up from there, right to there. I'm going to open this up a lot and bring the gain down to just like maybe plus two or three. All right, we got a little more bottom on that. And let's do the same thing with the higher frequency. Now we're looking for a little more punch. There's a little more punch right there. So same type of thing, maybe two up in like the one category. to maybe about two dB up. Great, so we adjusted that curve. We're starting to sound really nice now. You can hear your before after just by pressing your bypass. You can hear it's much more controlled now. So let's move on to the floor tom and do a very similar type of thing here. Plugins, EQ, and EQ7 band. Let's work on that. Right there seems to contain the most that I want gone. So I'm going to take that out and make a nice dip there. Getting better right already. So let's find where we want to get that punch up. It's not bad there. Too high. That's kind of cool. If you want that really low sound, I'd put it right there. So you open that up a little bit, you'll get a nice low sound. Good. Let's get a little bit more punch from this area. Too high. Looks like we got some input right there. We get some impact. Let's bring that down a bit and adjust our cue. All right, fantastic. Now we have both of our toms handled. Could hear how different that sounds how much more under control that sounds you don't want a lot of that extra ambient noise going on because we're going to have a lot of instruments that we're mixing together so we don't want to have any of that garbage type sound going on uh, let's take a look at the overheads remember when we do these overheads we're only going to do one eq and we're going to set both of them to the same eq i don't like to move around on that too much so let's check out this overhead on eq7 First things first, our high pass filter on. Let's drop right around the same area we did the snare drum. 
around 150 to 180 area, depending on what your overhead sound like. I picked 165, so we're gonna cut right there, and then we'll start doing our sweeps, here we go. You can see how much this little area highlights the snare drum. We want to take that down a bit. It's just overheads. I want them focused on my cymbals. They'll get everything, of course, but I want them focused on the cymbals. So now I address some of the lower end stuff coming in through the overheads. Uh, now I want to actually get that cymbal sound to sound right. So I want to find an area in the song where there's some crashes going on, uh, maybe some ride cymbal, some heavier stuff, which uh, is towards the end. If you just dig in over there, you can actually see how much bigger this is compared to when just the hi-hat's playing. These are nice, really big overhead uh, captures here. So let's head over to this area. It looks to be right at about 214 bar 76 if you're looking up here for it. sharp one right here we want to take out a bit that sound is going on the whole time I don't want a lot of that it's a bit annoying Seem like anything's whistling at us too high on the high end, so I'll leave that. And there we go, we have our EQ. Hit your Alt Option key and drag it down to your other overhead. Let's solo out the room and EQ that fella. We'll go to our plugins, our EQ, our EQ37 band, and get to work on it. Take out the low end a little bit on this guy. I'm going to take them out to about 126 in this particular mix. And you could try different areas, especially when you're doing your mix here. You might want to take it out a ton or just really leave a lot of it in, depending on what you don't have coming out of that drum track. I feel like we have a lot of kick, a lot of bass coming out of those kicks, so I'm going to leave the room for that for now. Uh, here we go with our sweeps. That's where the snare is sitting. It's sitting there heavily. So we'll take that out a little bit. Great. Let's move on, do a few more sweeps on it. That is that. We just EQ'd everything. So let's talk about panning these drums now. 
Uh, so we have an overhead left and an overhead right. I like to hard pan my overheads. I think it sounds very wide, makes the drum sound very big, and fills in any empty space there is on the speakers. Uh, so I'll go all the way to the left with this one and all the way to the right with this one. So left to the left, right to the right. The next thing you want is you want some separation in these toms here. If you take a listen to this part here, just solo your toms, you'll see that they're both coming out the center. They both sound good, but we can make them sound really cool. There's no movement, so I like to pretend I'm sitting behind the drum set and I have my rack tom is a bit to the left of me. Maybe let's put it at about 43. My floor tom is a lot to the right of me. Let's put that at about 65 and now listen back. Now that's more exciting. We're filling up more range and uh, we're letting the ears kind of have a little bit of candy there. So that's the start of it. We panned the things where they need to be. Everything else on the drums should be panned right up the middle. Your kick, your snare, uh, your room mic just right up the middle if you have two room mics of course and you did left and right you could do left and right with them uh, but otherwise I decided I would definitely decide to pan everything right up the middle uh, so you don't have anything too funky going on you don't want it to sound like a recording from the 20s where the drums were in the left speaker and the singer was in the right speaker <laughs> it's not what we're going for here we're going for a real cohesive type of thing so that's a start to this uh, we have a lot more to do here or to dig into uh, compressing each track next and we're also going to go ahead and do our second levels of EQs and compression and that's where it starts to really come together you start to really hear this mix gluing itself together but good start and good start with these EQs and we will uh, see you on the next one when we do those dynamic compressor plugins take care